Hi there, I'm just popping in quickly before the video starts to let you know that we're back. Yes, season two of the Measuring Up podcast starts on Monday, September the 3rd, bright and early. If you haven't listened to the podcast yet, then check out season one in the podcast player of your choice or at measuringuppodcast.com where you'll find all 10 episodes waiting just for your attention. Uh, but that's for later. Right now, you've got a video to watch. I'll see you Monday. With all the routing and dominoing on this banquette build complete, the next step is to sand absolutely everything. It just does not get any better than this, does it? So with everything sanded back and wiped down, I'm ready to start getting a, a clear top coat on this. Uh, now the eagle eye amongst you will have noticed I do not have my sprayer set up, I am back on a roller and tray. Um, I'm not giving up on the sprayer, uh, that it's just that at the moment this is a clear coat on top of birch ply whereas the spray booth thing that I made is just covered in white paint and I don't want any kind of transfer of little bits and particles. Uh, plus I haven't used this uh, lacquer in a sprayer before and I want to try that uh, before you know <laughs> scrubbing up the finish on this. I know it does roller quite well. Uh, and I think for the sort of finish it is, this first coat anyway is going to soak right in and be sanded right off. But we'll uh, uh, get a clear coat on with the roller, then that can dry overnight and we can get cracking on the rest in the morning. I'm using a Yunker Strong water-based poly flooring lacquer in a satin finish. And I'm applying a generous first coat with a 150mm foam roller to everything visible. The top and base, the doors, the dividers, the back and the plinth. So there we go, first uh, coats of lacquer on everything. Uh, this is actually touch dry pretty much already now. Uh, it really soaks in fast on the first coat. It brings the grain up nicely, and then we can rub that back again, sand that right back. That'll go super smooth. Then we can get a second and third coats on, and the second and third coats dry much faster, much faster recoat time. Uh, but for now, uh, not much I can do until all this lot dries, so time to call that a day and uh, pop back either later or in the morning. Uh, this is all dried out nicely overnight, as you might expect, rough as a badger's backside. But we're going to sander on this, get it smoothed out nicely, uh, and then maybe a finishing sander on it uh, to, to denib it again uh, with some P320. Uh, and then we get another coat on that, and that should dry all together much happier. I'm starting with a P120 abrasive and working my way through the grits to P320 on all the components paying special attention to the exposed edges of the plywood as I don't want any splintering at all in the finished workpiece. And with everything cleaned up I can get on with the next coat of water-based poly. So the second coat's dried, it's gone on really nicely. Uh, it's not quite as silky smooth as I'd like just yet. So what we'll do, we'll go over it with uh, uh, another bit of denibbing. I know I said I'll use P320 earlier on. I'm actually going to use this uh, P500 Abrolon. This is the Merca abrasive on a thin foam back, five or six mil foam back. Uh, it's a bit like using a soft pad on a finishing sander. It just kind of rides over the undulations of the surface nicely uh, so you don't get those awkward little high spots uh, if you're using a, a hard pad. And uh, it goes all the way through to P4000, I think. Really nice abrasive. Uh, I used it in the uh, for doing the gloss on the cabinets, the green gloss on the cabinets that I did on the, on the big job of mine. Uh, so we'll give this a, a, a deneb with the P500, then get another coat on it, and that should sort it out. Now I'm not going to subject you to the full process again, but you can see how nicely this third coat of lacquer is going on, and bringing up the grain of the birch ply really well. So this is all dry now, and it really is a lovely finish, nice and smooth. We're going to go over this with some P2000 Abrolone on a hand backing pad, just to sort of give, denib it 
and give it that really super silky smooth finish the kind of thing where you can't quite stop touching it um, and that's it basically that's that's all there is for the finishing um, and start getting the domino connectors in and start thinking about getting this together as a, as a dry fit Okay, so we've flipped the base over, so we're working on the underside, this is the front edge. So we put a kind of lacquer on that. Uh, we've got the plinth off. Uh, I've fitted some little blocks in the corners here, uh, so that when the plinth goes on, it just fits over those nicely. And it's a nice, snug friction fit. However, you and I know perfectly well that when you flip that over this is probably almost certainly going to fall off so we're going to use some of our old pals little button fix fixing it's just a couple of these in the center just to keep it all together so you can move it around With everything accessible like this, there's no need for the little red marking buttons or marker tool, and I can simply hold the button fix Type 2 connectors in place whilst screwing them down permanently, then checking that they do the job. Now with the base flipped over and pulled forward slightly, I'm dry fitting the bank out ends and the dividers, keeping everything temporarily together with a few screws from underneath. So we've got everything roughly dry fitted. These are just wet together with a single screw uh, and dry dominoes just to uh, hold it together so we can get the top on and make sure everything fits. Uh, I'm using these domino connectors to fit these in. We've got 16 of these to do. Uh, they're quite clever actually. Uh, you've got a little piece here that just fits in. Sometimes it needs hammering. Sometimes it will just slot straight in. And then a little plastic piece that goes in over it. And again, usually just push fit. And that's more or less it. There's a Another half to this it has a little pin that goes in there, and then there's a screw that connects them and a little cover cap. So, literally on the flip side of this, uh, we've got to put the connectors in uh, the, the other side that sort of meet. So this finishes in two parts again. Oops. I'll lose those, these are expensive. And you have a little piece that hammers in uh, to the mortise or just slots in. And then you've got a little pin that screws in and that little pin pulls a little thing when it goes in tight and spreads the, this little fitting out so it grabs onto the sides really well. It's quite a clever system. Each pin has a sort of scoop cut out and you just need to make sure that it's facing the right way. One down, 15 to go. Okay, so all the little pins in the in the top. And this is where the fun starts. Basically, we get sixteen of these aligned perfectly into these sixteen holes. Uh, did I mention you need to be quite accurate with these? About a half a millimetre tolerance on them. So uh, yeah, let's see how we do. Probably get my gripper gloves. That help. Do this for real. I'll do it on its face or its back. <laughs> no. 
Thank you. Never in doubt. <laughs> okay, that did go easier than I expected. Uh, right, and then what we do next is there's some little, I'm not going to lock all these down, we have a little screw that goes into that fitting. Oop. Into this little fitting, there's a little screw that goes in there and locks against the pin. I'll just pop a couple of those in. I just want to check that the back fits, get the doors on, make sure they all fit okay. Uh, and if that's alright then I can get the tracks glued in uh, and get it wrapped out ready to uh, ready to deliver tomorrow I think. So with the pins locked in place the fittings are concealed with a natural coloured cover cap that simply clips in place. So there you go, this is about uh, <laughs> potentially as good as it gets. Uh, I'm not going to be able to shoot anything on the install of this because there's no, nothing much to see you've done. It'll just be doing exactly what I've done already, but on site in somebody's kitchen. Uh, but it's all gone together very nicely. Uh, the drawers are, doors are in and sliding well. Uh, I need to fix the tracks in. They have a little squeeze of silicon spray in the grooves. The back is on and fits nicely. So it's all, it's all looking good. Uh, the birch ply is gorgeous, got a lovely finish on it. Um, but that's basically it. That's a you know birch ply banquette with three sliding doors for children's toys in a family kitchen. Um, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and uh, do consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. But that's it for this week. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Don't forget, season two of the Measuring Up podcast starts on Monday, September the 3rd, bright and early. If you haven't listened to the podcast yet, then check out season one in your podcast player of choice or at measuringuppodcast.com where you'll find all 10 episodes waiting for your attention. Uh, don't forget, Monday, September the 3rd, bright and early. I'll see you there.